Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuvir. In this class, we will discuss about uh, the mathematical proof of RSA. In our last class, we clearly discussed an example how RSA works. Please watch that class and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. So coming to before we move on to the mathematical proof, let's try to refresh the concept of Euler's theorem, which we already discussed mathematically in our discrete mathematic playlist. So what's the Euler's theorem says is a power phi of n equal to 1 mod n. This is what Euler's theorem says. And there is a second version of Euler's theorem which we have not yet discussed that second version of Euler's theorem but we are going to use that second version of Euler's theorem in our RSA algorithm. Just understand the formula. So going deep into the math, it is not required as of now here in this example. So that's why just understand the formula. If you have the basic idea about Euler's theorem, that's enough. What's this second version is a power k multiplied by phi of n plus 1. That is congruent to here we have written it as equal to here also it's congruent to congruent to a mod n. See here a mod n k power k multiplied by phi of n plus 1. This second version of Euler's theorem we are going to use it in our RSA algorithm. Now let's try to understand what we are what we have done in our RSA algorithm. We are going to generate two prime numbers p and q and from these two prime numbers we are generating n value n is equal to p multiplied by q and this n from this n we need to identify phi of n because we are having p and q prime numbers we can easily find the phi of n value p minus 1 q minus 1. So from this phi of n from the set of phi of n means from phi of n set we are going to generate e and d and e and d are inverse of each other and this e and n value is given as public key and d value is kept as private key. This is what we have done in RSA algorithm. Now try to understand what happens in the encryption stage of a RSA. If you want to encrypt p is the plain text and this plain text if you want to convert that into cipher text plain text power e mod n this is what we have done in encryption of rsa so whenever you encrypted it p power e mod n so what happens during the decryption phase during decryption if you want to get the plain text you are going to receive the cipher text cipher text power d mod n this is what we have done now why we are exactly getting the inverse value why we are getting the plain text value that point we need to understand c power d mod n c means cipher text how you got this cipher text p power e mod n so substitute p power e mod n in place of c so that's why p power e whole power d mod n okay this can be written as p power e d mod n So whenever E and D are inverse of each other, what's that inverse of each other means E multiplied by D mod phi of n equal to 1. That is what then only we say it as E and D are inverse because E and D are selected from the set phi of n. So E and D, E multiplied by D modulus phi of n is equal to 1. Then only we say it as these two are equal these two are inverse of each other. So from this point we can write it as e multiplied by d is going to divide it by phi of n and it is going to give you a reminder value of 1. So that's why you can write it as ed can be written as k is some constant value some constant integer multiplied by phi of n because it is divisible by phi of n and plus 1 because it is going to give you the reminder value 1. This can be written like this. ED can be written like this. Basic multiplication. Because it is going to divide it by phi of n and giving the remainder value 1. This can be written like this. 
So now in place of ed, we can write it as p power ed in place of ed, we can write it as k multiplied by phi of n plus 1 modulus n. This is same as second version of Euler's theorem. a power k multiplied by phi of n plus 1. p power k multiplied by phi of n plus 1 modulus n. This is equal to a mod n, p mod n. Here in place of a, we are having p. This is the same as p mod n. p mod n means you are going to get p. So that's why, that's why the, from this, from this point, you need to understand that uh, you have to get the clarity that uh, the p value means the plain text value. This is very, very important to understand. Uh, this plain text value should not be greater than the n value. In RSA, you have to maintain that uh, your plain text value, suppose if your n is having 300 digits, your plain text value should not be above 300 digit. It should not be above n value. Then you are going to get p. So from this, we are going to get the plain text. This is the mathematical proof for understanding of how RSA algorithm works and the, how it is providing security because of this phi of n. Because phi of n is not available to the public. For public we are generating only n value. Given n, identifying phi of n is very very difficult for large numbers. This point we clearly understood when we discussed about uh, Euler's pi function. Hope you understand the mathematical derivation of RSA algorithm. If you have any questions regarding the concept, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.